God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, yes, it's what a mighty God we serve. A mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, yes, it's what a mighty God we serve. A mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. The angels bow, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth, the angels bow, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth, the angels bow, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on and put your hands together. He's God all over the ocean. God all over the sea. God all over creation. And he's God all over me. I know that God is God. He will never change. I know that God is God. And he always will be God. Oh, yes, he's God all over the ocean, yay! God all over the sea, God all over creation, and he's God all over me. I know that God is God. He will never change. I know that God is God. He will never change. I know that God is God. He will never change. I know that God is God. And he always will be God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, saints. I said praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Hallelujah Temple. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, we're here to give praise to our Lord. Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you on this morning, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you have done and for all that you are doing here in our midst. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you will have your way on today. God, in the name of Jesus, that you will walk up and down the aisles, O oh God. God, that you will heal, deliver, and set free. O oh God, in the name of Jesus, those who are tuning in, O oh God. God, that they will hear from you on today, O oh God. And say, what must I do to be saved? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask, O oh God, that you touch sickness bodies, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that you would do the miraculous, hallelujah, in our lives. Father, we love you. We praise you. We magnify you, oh God. We give your name the honor and the glory, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bless everything, oh God, that is being said and done here in this place, oh God. God, we ask, oh God, that we hear a word from you, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, a fresh anointed word, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, and that no one will leave this place the same. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. Have your way, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we'll be so careful to give your name the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Let all the saints of God say, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah and amen. What a mighty God we Oh! 
on, open up your mouth and give him glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Open your mouth, open your mouth and bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Come on and put your hands together and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on and open your mouth and give him a praise. He has done great things. He has done great things. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're here to praise the Lord. We're here to magnify him and bless his name. This is the day the Lord has made. And we will, what? Rejoice and be glad in it. Look at someone to the left or to the right or speak to yourself and say, it's good for us to be here. Yes, it is. It's a blessing for us to have this time together to magnify and worship the Lord because it's for this purpose we are created. We're created to give him glory, honor, and praise. We're created to magnify him and worship and bless his holy name. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the move of your spirit already. We thank you, Lord God, for the praises that have gone up. Hallelujah. We know you inhabit the praises of your people. And I ask now that my speech nor my preaching will be with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Let flesh decrease that you might increase, God. Search my heart, Lord. Take out everything that's not like you. I want to be that vessel that will be pleasing in your sight. And Lord, let this word be transformative in the hearts and minds and spirits of the hearers whether they are here physically or virtually, Lord. We know faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. And we'll be careful to give you the praise right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear you shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to use two scriptures as the backdrop, and then we'll do some what I'll call a safari, where we just go through a variety of different scriptures, and we'll see how far we will go um, today. We're still following along the, type, the thought pattern of what type of spirit you have. We know that it's not about your resume. It's about your spirit, right? Amen. And, and we're still in awe of how God used Caleb in such a mighty way, but it was because of his spirit. And God wants us to have a clean spirit, a pure spirit. And he wants us to take hold of his promises by faith. And so today we're going to deal with as a topic, um, the power is in the promise. All right? The power is in the promise. And uh, we're going to use as two scriptures to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. This is a foundational one. Hold on to this one. You'll see this even coming up uh, later in other messages. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. And if you have it, you can read out loud along with me. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let's read that again. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Praise God. And, and the apostle was letting us know God has given us such great promises. He'll be our father. We'll be his sons and daughters. He will be with us. And because of that, we should cleanse ourselves. There's some things we got to do, all right? Amen. And as we do our part, God will do his part. Also, it's good for us to know that all of God's promises, and this is from 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yea and amen unto the glory of God by us. When God says it, it is so. It is so. Praise God. So be it. Praise the Lord. But there's a role that we play in the fulfillment of his promises. 
Um, there's a role that we play in believing him and trusting him. And all that has to do with the spirit that we have and how we allow our spirit man to motivate us in the choices and actions that we take. And so we're going to use as a backdrop of another example of our lesson uh, from Joshua chapter 17, and we're going to read verses 14 through 18. So our object lesson today will be taken from Joshua 17, verses 14 through 18. And it reads, And the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua, saying, Why hast thou given me but one lot and one portion to inherit, seeing I am a great people? For as much as the Lord hath blessed me hitherto. And Joshua answered them, If thou be a great people, then get thee up to the wood country, and cut down for thyself there in the land of the Perizzites and of the giants, if Mount Ephraim be too narrow for thee. And the children of Joseph said, The hill is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites that dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron. Both they who are of Bethshean and her towns, and they who are of the valley of Jezreel. And Joshua spake to the house of Joseph, and even to Ephraim and to Manasseh, saying, Thou art a great people, and hast great power. And thou shalt not have one lot only, but the mountain shall be thine, for it is wood, and thou shalt cut it down, and the outgoings of it shall be thine. For thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots, and though they be strong. Amen. 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 The power is in the promise. You may be seated. Praise God. Now, this is interesting because we have, a little bit earlier, uh, two major points. One is that in Joshua 16, verses 1 through 4, the lot had fallen to the children of Joseph. And it will say what they had received in terms of their allocation. All right? But they will come back to Joshua later and ask for more. They said, we are a great people. Now, here we have to wonder, what do they mean by greatness? Uh, certainly, it's not in the sense of numerical size. Because uh, when you add... Uh, the children of Joseph, he had Manasseh and Ephraim. Even if you added both of those tribes together, they were not numerically even larger than Judah by itself. And also we understand that half of Manasseh decided to take land on the other side of the Jordan. They asked Moses, uh, even before they crossed the Jordan, if they could reside there. And Moses said, yes, if you allow your warriors to come and fight for all the others. And once there is peace in, in, in the land of promise, you can go back and you can maintain this land on the other side of the Jordan River. So half of Manasseh was already allotted land on the other side of the Jordan. So we're talking about only half of Manasseh and all of Joseph. So we can't be talking numerically, yes, yes. because in terms of size, they were not necessarily even the largest tribe in um, Israel. Yes. Now, they had received some wonderful promises. I won't read it, but in Deuteronomy 33, before um, Moses would leave, he will bless all of the different tribes, and he will speak over Joseph some wonderful things, how great they are and how great they will be. And it's believed that th what Moses said to them, they took hold of in terms of their privilege and their honor and their preeminence. But greatness in God is not just something that you get from pedigree. It's not something just because you're seventh or eighth generation Kojic, or it's not something in terms of your education or anything. Greatness in God is rooted in your faith in God and the type of spirit that you have. And so, you know, it's so important that we allow God to constantly cleanse our spirit because your spirit can become contaminated by various different things. Your spirit can become contaminated by bad thoughts. You can just start thinking negatively, and it could be based upon an error or a setback or what somebody said or how you feel, and, and before you know it, you're in a downward spiral. You can be, uh, your spirit can be contaminated by your feelings. 
your body is not operating properly and, and you're wondering, you haven't gone to the doctor yet to see exactly what it is, but all type of crazy thoughts start coming up. I mean, crazy thoughts. And why even entertain crazy thoughts and you don't even know what it is? But we tend to jump to the extreme, unfortunately. And unfortunately, as a result of that, we can find ourselves um, um, being, uh, taking on a spirit of infirmity. Spirit of infirmity is a sickness spirit. And, and you can be sick in your mind and carry symptoms in your body. You know, you can go to the doctor and say, you know, my, I'm hurting right here. And they will run all type of tests. And they will say, we don't have any source or reason why you have the pain right here. But the pain is real. But the pain is not physiological. And, you know, sometimes you can even have what is called phantom pain. Many times when someone has experienced an amputation in their body, they can still have pain coming from the severed limb. They'll be saying, my leg hurt. It's like, you don't have a leg. But it's a phantom pain. The mind, the brain is still processing as if that limb is there. Okay? And, and we know there's a such thing as a spirit of infirmity. Remember, there was a lady for 17 years who was hunched over. Remember? And Jesus spoke the word to her and expelled the spirit. And what did she do? She straightened up. Not every manifestation of the demonic has a physiological manifestation, but in many cases, it can. And sometimes your thoughts and how you think can greatly affect your spirit, man. Hallelujah. And so we have to check out our thoughts and check out our minds and be careful of the things we allow to germinate. We know from our text from earlier that the Lord sent the children of Israel some spies to inspect the land, and, and, and he gave this land to them. He had already promised this land to Abraham. He had already made provisions for them. And when they returned, the people were, the spies gave a negative report. They said, it's walled cities, and there's giants in the land, and we are like grasshoppers in their sight. And you know what? How, do you, how you see yourself plays a major role in your receiving the promises of God. Because something can prophetically can be given today, even in this message, that any one of you can take hold of. But some of you will let it slip past you because you don't think you can receive anything that good in your life. Because you have taken on a spirit of pitifulness. Yeah, it can happen. You know, I, I, I've seen it too often, even among church people, a, a pitifulness. Pitifulness means to be distressed and regretful, to be sorry, sympathetic for one's suffering. And you know what? It, it, it can go on to the point where you become joyless, cheerless, hopeless. Because the opposite of pitifulness is cheerful, wealthy, prosperous, hopeful, joyful. You know? But we can take on circumstances and say, this happened to me. This promise was broken. This has happened. And we can take on ourselves a pitifulness or rejection. These things can come in and contaminate our ability to even hear by faith. Because faith cometh by what? Hearing. 
hearing the word of God. So your being here is great because you're in the right environment for a transformative rhema word to come down on the inside and catapult you to a whole new dimension regardless of what you went through last night, regardless of what you went through this morning, regardless of what you've gone through. God's rhema word, the king of heaven, the maker of the ends of the earth, have a word for you to be changed if you will let him and receive it. Lord, give me a teachable spirit. Give me a heart to be receptive of what you have for me. You know, sometimes when we get rejected or feel rejection, it's hard for us to accept. You know, some people will be trying to help you and you'll be rejected. No, that's all right. No, thank you. No, uh -uh. you know you need it. But you still, you get so used to rolling alone, handling things on your own. And as a result, you take on rejection versus acceptance. So they said that we are like grasshoppers in their eyes. And I was thinking to myself, why did they come up with grasshoppers? It would have been better for them to say ants. Because you know what? Ants don't roll alone. Ants are in a group. Ants, hallelujah, are mighty. They might be small, but they're mighty. Some ants can lift up to 100 times their weight. And all of them have a role. There might be a soldier ant or a scout ant or a worker ant, but they all work together as part of the colony. Okay? And that would have been better because at least they would have been thinking of the strength in numbers and, and, and we're going beyond our capacity. But a, but a grasshopper is a little bit different. You know, a grasshopper might fly around and they could leap, you know, 20 times their length. And they eat a lot of grass and vegetation and things. But we don't think of grasshoppers as uh, anything formidable. And that's how they saw themselves. We're just something to be stepped on and squished. The devil is a liar. God didn't bring you out of bondage. God didn't save you. God didn't die on the cross for you, for you to be under the foot of the enemy and under the foot of your problems. Hallelujah. And what we're talking about is how you see yourself. We're not talking about the reality of you being a grasshopper. It's how you see yourself. See, we got to allow the mirror of the word of God to come in and transform how we see ourselves. Uh, I think it was Paul who said, you know, we with open face behold the glory of the Lord and we're transformed over and over again. Every time we get a glimpse of his glory, there's a change down on the inside. You become more like Jesus every day. You start to think differently. You start to memorize differently. You start to recategorize your experiences. You allow healing to come in. See, some of us have a wounded spirit. We've been wounded and broken by broken promises and things. But let God come in and heal you. And if he heals you down on the inside, hallelujah, and your spirit man becomes strong, you can run through a troop and leap over a wall. You can be a possessor of the promises. And amen, you will be willing to wait on God and know that he will come through every time because all his promises, not some of his promises, but all his promises are a yea and amen. Yes, he can. Yes, he will. Yes, it will happen. Yes, it shall come to pass. I don't know when, but I'm going to wait until my change come. And I'm going to keep on giving him praise. While I'm waiting, I'm giving you praise. While I'm waiting, I'm giving you glory. While I'm waiting, I'm keeping my heart pure. While I'm waiting, I'm monitoring my thoughts. While I'm waiting, I'm faithful with my tithes while I'm waiting I'm working while it's day for when night cometh no man can work hallelujah hallelujah his promises have power yes they do and so Caleb claimed his blessing and we know that God selected him and Joshua to go on. And when he got to the promised land in Joshua 14, he would even see the mountain, Mount Hebron, that he had saw 40 years earlier. And he will say to uh, Joshua, we don't need to cast lots on this one. I claimed this one 40 years ago before all these folk were around. I claimed that thing. I want the mountain. I know there are giants up in there. 
but I'm not concerned about the overwhelming odds or the obstacles. Hallelujah. I know my God. I know he's able. I know we're going to take this mountain and we're going to overcome the giants. Because guess what? I don't see myself as a grasshopper. I see myself as a giant slayer. I see myself as an overcomer. I believe that even Caleb's faith probably informed David many years later when David went down to that valley and faced Goliath of Gath. He already had a testimony to draw from. Caleb whoop a giant. I can whoop a giant because God is with us. He's the God of Israel. It's not about how big the problem is, how insurmountable the problem is, how impossible it may seem his promises are yay and amen hallelujah hallelujah and so things might seem insurmountable things might seem impossible things might seem improbable but when you have faith in God it's an opportunity for God's glory we might have to stretch but it is obtainable And we have to seek God for the victory. And the victory is in our strategizing. You got to have a plan. And as we're waiting, don't be weary in Mm well-doing. Ye shall reap if ye faint not. Don't stop praying. Don't throw in the towel. Don't faint while you're waiting. Be like Abraham in Romans chapter 4. Apostle Paul said he empowered his faith, giving glory to God. And so as he was waiting, he was giving God praise. As he was waiting, he was giving God glory. As he was waiting, he was occupying himself. Because if you get idle, you can find yourself becoming slothful. Now, it's not in the Bible, but the saints used to say an idle mind is the devil's workshop. When you just start scrolling on your, your device and just start whatever and just let time pass, you can find yourself slipping into things that will just waste your time at best or take you down a rabbit hole of things that are not even appropriate for you to see or do. Amen. Amen. So idleness and slothfulness, being slack, can open the door for the enemy. And in that case, it can also cause us to miss out on the move of God. Because as opposed to being strengthened, as opposed to redeeming the time through prayer, redeeming the time through praising God, redeeming the time through studying his word or witnessing or doing things that will build you up. You're doing things that will really just feed the flesh. And when you feed the flesh, the flesh will get stronger. Amen. And that's why you have to be careful, you know, uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. That's what the enemy will use to try to come in and, 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 and bring your flesh to a place where it's stronger. And then, of course, the flesh is more prone to wander. It's prone to wander and waste time and waste opportunities and open the door for slackness. Hallelujah. And we got to fight that thing. We got to fight slackness with everything known to man. Because it just doesn't produce anything. And we ain't got no time to waste. Turn to someone and say, you don't have any time to waste. You really don't. I mean, at the end of the day, if we do a retrospective, it's like we've wasted enough time already on nothing. Hallelujah. And there's a state of readiness we need to be in when it comes to the promises of God. Because when it comes to his promises, and this is one thing that really struck me even on my first trip to Israel, I was amazed at all the rocks that were everywhere. You talk about rocks. I thought the land was growing rocks. I mean, there were rocks, big boulders, little ones. I mean, there's just rocks all over the place. And so when they went out to, and this is thousands, of, you know, a thousand plus years since they actually got the allotment, okay? So when they got to the promised land, not only were there giants and, and people inhabiting it, but there were forests and trees and rocks. And so when he gave them the land, it wasn't like it was all cleared out. And see, that's how we be thinking. 
I'm just walking into my promise. Everything is all laid out. Everything is, you know, uh, all paved. Mm -mm, you're going to have to do some elbow work. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We had some members out there outside cutting down a couple of the bushes. Yeah. Praise God for that. Amen. And they were sweating cutting down those bushes. You can imagine cutting down trees and pulling up stumps. And, and they, don't have the, they didn't have the heavy equipment that we had. They had to use the oxen and yoke them up and pull them out and, and do all that type of work. But guess what? What I got when I saw all the rocks in the land and all the rocks there was that there's also my part. I have my part I have to do when it comes to possessing the promises of God. I have my part to do when it comes to the blessings of the Lord. Yes, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and he addeth no sorrow with it but I'm gonna have to get out there and pull some rocks up and as I'm pulling up the rocks I can't be complaining hallelujah I'm gonna have to whistle while I work I'm gonna have to be happy about it I was a slave I was bound I was being beaten but God worked miracles to bring me out of bondage now I have something that I possess now I am an owner now I am a landowner Lord make me the man you would have me to be and it takes some elbow grease it took some work it took a strategy it took a a plan to clear out the land in order to plant what needed to be planted so sometimes we have a misconception when it comes to God's blessings that God's blessings are totally convenient he does all the work he done sent the angels out there they done pulled up all the forest they done mopped up everything and you just walk up there and do nothing nobody Mm -mm, you're made to work. You are designed to work. Even after you retire, you better do something. Keep that mind going because your body will break down if you do nothing. You're designed to think. You're designed to learn. You're designed to study. You're designed to move. Hallelujah. And so when they got to the land, not only were there giants, but there were forests. And so the Joseph, they got their allotment, and they came over to Joshua. And in so many words, they said, Brother Joshua, you got it wrong. You don't understand. We from Job's tribe. We're the anointed ones. We're the blessed and highly favored. And you done gave us this little one allotment. We need more. Because we are great. We're prominent. You know, Joseph held it down. And Joshua looked at him and said, yes, you are from uh, Joseph's tree and Joseph Lotman. And I know you're great. I can see the greatness in you. Now go out there and whoop those Canaanites. Yeah. Go out there in that whole forest over there. You count that as land. Go ahead and cut down the forest. Cut down the trees. Whoop the Canaanites. I don't care if they have iron chariots. I'm speaking faith into your life. You are great. You are able. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on and take possession of your greatness and go out there and fight. Go out there and work. Go out there and take what God has for you. Don't be asking me for no more land. It's right there up there on that mountain. Take the mountain. Take the forest whoop those Canaanites get up and do your work you got to work on this thing you got to work while it's day you got to take possession of what God has for you hey 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 I'm gonna tell you this and you may not shout on it you may not shout on it he gave the promise, but he don't owe you nothing. He gave the promise, but he doesn't owe you anything. God pays all his bills. Oh, glory. I know y'all don't want to shout on that one. All his promises, I'm almost done. Are yea and amen. I'm going to start preaching to myself after a while. Glory to God. He comes through every time. He comes through every time. 
He said, no one has left houses or lands or mother or father or sister for my sake and the gospel who will not in this life, in this life, receive 100 Oh, if you invest your life, if you invest your talent, if you invest your dreams, if you invest yourself in the work of God, God will bless you a hundredfold. You will never walk away and say, I wasted my time in church. I wasted my time serving Jesus. I wasted my time giving my tithes. I wasted my time living holy. The devil is a liar. In this life, you don't even have to wait for heaven. In this life, a life he said I came that you might have life and that more abundantly I came for you to have peace I came for you to have joy I came for you to have wisdom I came for you to be an overcomer I came that you might possess my possessions and manifest my glory on the earth it's for my glory it's for my honor it's not like we're so big it's not like we're so strong it's not like we're so wise it's not like we're so pure it's by his grace hallelujah where would I be without his grace where would you be if it wasn't for his grace where would you be if it wasn't for his mercy Lord make me a good steward over what you've given me make me a good steward over the calling you placed in my life make me a good steward over the promises that you've given me let me not be slack let me not be slothful let me not sabotage your work in my life forgive me for wasting time Forgive me for being slothful. Forgive me for flirting with sin. Wash me today because I want to take all that you have for me. Give me this mountain. Caleb asked for the mountain. Joshua had to tell Joseph, take the mountain. What you talking about, boy? Didn't you hear his testimony? Didn't you hear his testimony? 80 years old, he's whooping giants, and you up here complaining about some giants and some, and some iron chariots? Get up and fight. Get up and possess. Get up and take what God has for you. Shake yourself and work. Possess the promises of God. Come on and give them praise. Come on and stand to your feet and say, I am a possessor. I'm going to possess the promise. I'm going to possess the power. I want what you have for me. I thank you, God. Hey, 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 help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Woo! You are great and you will take the mountain you are great and you can whoop the Canaanites. Yeah, they might be strong. Yeah, they might have iron chariots. Yeah, they might be more supplied. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? Yea, all his promises are yea and amen. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. In your life, yes, he will. Will he do it? Yes, he can. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Come on and take hold of the promises of God. The power is in the promise. Joshua spoke faith to those boys. Joshua spoke faith to them and said, your greatness is not in your pedigree. Your greatness is not in your name. Your greatness is in your faith. Take the spirit of faith and fight and possess what God has for you. Come on and stand to your feet and give them a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Woo! It may not be convenient. It may seem insurmountable. It might even seem impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With Jesus, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. With Jesus, if he promised it, it shall come to pass. If he said it, it is good. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same God. He's never changed. It's not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hey, 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 hey. Today, today, today. If you hear my voice and harden not your heart.
It's not about the past. It's today. Right now, today. Right now, right now, right now. Right now is a time for your miracle. Right now is a time for your blessings. Right now is a time for transformation. Right now, you can get it right with God. If you've got something in your heart that's not right, repent and let it go. And let's go forward in God. Let today be a new beginning. We're here to take the land. The forest. The forest for wood. That mountain. Lord, bless these, your people, that we will walk worthy of the vocation that you've called us to. Thank you for rebuking the spirit of rejection, the spirit of fear, the spirit of inadequacy, the spirit of slothfulness, the spirit of pitifulness. Thank you for the spirit of excellence. Thank you for the spirit of faith. Thank you, Lord God, for confidence and for peace. Thank you for strengthening us by your spirit in the inner man. Hey, 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 hey. Teach my fingers to fight and my hands to war. Thou hast strengthened me with strength in my soul. Come on and confess your miracle. Come on and confess your breakthrough. Come on and confess the promises. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yeah. There is a higher height. There is a deeper depth. And we are going to keep on. We're going to keep on until we find it. Come on, come on. The devil's a liar. The devil's defeated. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The power is in the promise. And we are possessors. We are custodians of the promises of God. That good thing that was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on and shout hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah Temple is a religious, non-profit organization. Our heartfelt thanks goes to everyone who continues to support this ministry, whether through Givelify or at our website at www.hallelujahtemple.org. Your contribution to Hallelujah Temple helps further the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Stay connected to us through our Facebook page for more words from our leadership.